Hey guys, welcome back. Rod here at Jetboard Australia. Uh, we've got a really cool uh, job to do today. Uh, I've got a brand new Jet Surf Race DFI 2023 model. Uh, I've got a pair for a customer that's coming to pick it up later today. So we're going to do a little bit of an unbox. You get to see what's inside, what sort of cool stuff. Uh, it's part of the Jet Surf um, new board package. Um, so let's get stuck into it and uh, I'll show you what it's all about. So. Jets have packed their boards up really well, uh, nicely strapped up. And we'll cut all the strap out. And they have these really solid cuts that they have so they're, they're super well packed. Okay, that packing's out of the way. Let's get the top off. Check out the goodies inside. Okay, so this is how they come. So what we've got here is all the bindings. So the race boards have the single bindings, which will set up goofy or natural. This particular guy is uh, natural, so we'll set that up for him. So we'll put them aside. They, whoops, I don't need the bolts, obviously. Hold them on. Then we've got the stand. Everyone knows about the famous Jet Surf stands. Or, uh, the typical scissor style stand. If you guys don't know how to set them up, push them together, twist them, and grab the two outsides. Uh, they can be a bit of a thing to do if you don't know that little trick. So that's the stand. I'll set that over there the way. Okay, wheels, awesome for airports traveling, even just running down the footpath, down to the beach, whatever. They go underneath the back of the, the board bag. I'll show you those in a minute. Here we have the board itself. Beautiful bags. Uh, anything Jet Surf do, just good quality stuff. Now the bags are beautifully made. Um, you know, even the tool kits and the wheels. And even on the back of these bags, there's a uh, there's a backpack set up. So very very cool. So there you go. This one's an orange. My favourite colour. Uh, I have one very similar to this myself. So basically, what you've got inside the bag. You have in this case here all your books and manuals and whatnot. Which I'll zip out and throw my card in it so that people know who, who the board came from. Then you've got your toolkit on the front. We'll open up and we'll run through what's in there. So basically in your toolkit here, in the front compartment, we should have some pins. So yep, so that's your fin bracket which bolts underneath the board and holds your center SES fin. So that's got to be put on. I'll stick that on in a sec. So I'll keep that one out. And then you'll have your fin set, which your center fin, and then your two outside fins, left and right hand. So they're cool. And we'll show you a little video later on how they go on. Uh, pretty simple, but uh, there are some little tricks to it. So. They're cool. In fact, we'll leave them in the bag for the time being. So then we open up the, the rest of the bag here. So here we are, this is inside the bag. So basically, um, your fins, as we saw, are in that front compartment, which you can get from the inside and the outside. Then from there, we have uh, our Allen key screwdriver, and that's perfect for fitting this particular plate. So the screws for this plate are in under the board, so we'll, we'll do that in a sec. And that's the screwdriver, or Allen screwdriver, to do that job. That sits in there. Then in here, we'll have the two lanyards. We'll see your start-stop lanyards with a magnet, so there's two of those there. Uh, one you'll use in a spare. And moving along, you'll have the spark plug spanner. They're handy. And then, obviously, in the top here, we have a spare spark plug. So spare plug, we have also our little flusher attachment, and we can show you how that works a little later on as well. That's cool. And also in there is your throttle limit and throttle stop, and that screws into the top of the handle here, and that allows you to limit the amount of throttle for beginners or you know, if you don't want to give someone full power. So 
put that in there as well. So that's all cool in there. So we'll move over to the bottom one. So in here is the charger. And the jets have a great. They are spliced with an Australian made plug. Perfect. And then the actual charger set up. So that goes on to the clip in. It'll be, yeah, just this tied top of the board. Uh, looking for the red cable tie and matches the red cable tie for that. Uh, and obviously when you plug that in, the charger will come up green to start with. Then when you plug in the board, it will go red. During the charging process, it's red. When it's fully charged, it turns green. There's uh, operating instructions in there anyway, but pretty straightforward. If you if you ever used a, uh, a charger like that before, they're all pretty much the same. Green is good, red is bad. So <laughs> simple stuff there. We'll put that away. And here we have some spares. <clears throat> so in there you get a spare uh, cord for your handle, some spare screws and that for your bindings, um, cable ties obviously for this as well, and then some just little O rings and bits and boards. So handy stuff to have. They also have a spark tester. That you'll probably never use, <laughs> but they do supply a spark tester. If you've got problems with spark, uh, you can test it. Instructions are inside. Uh, to be honest with you, uh, these late model boards don't have any problems, so uh, you won't need that. I'm surprised they actually still put them in the kit. So that's your toolkit, so very comprehensive. This particular bag um, is designed to travel on the board while it's in the case, but obviously it's not designed to put on the board while you're riding, so it's, it's you know, obviously a dry weather case. So. That's all that there, so I'll get this out of the way. Okay, great, let's get this puppy out of the uh, out of the box, get it on its stand, we'll start assembling it. So, I'll leave the clips there. I'll put the handle in there so it doesn't rattle around. And then you've got uh, that nice protective pad at the rear of the board before that's been set. And then uh, we'll go to the stand. And while we're here, we'll have a quick look at the bag. So the bag on the other side has the setup for obviously your backpack in here. So you have two straps that come out. And then you've got the two little buckles here. And obviously that uh, twister. Snap that in place there. And there. You have a backpack. Really handy if you head to the beach. Obviously, you can use the wheels. Put on the back here. There you go. Wheels. Wheels. Wheels slide in there. So if you head to the beach, you can use the wheels along the footpath. When you get to the sand, you throw the backpack on, down to wherever you're going to put the board and bag, um, unload it, hit the surf and then you can throw it back in the backpack, back for home again. So yeah, really handy setup. This is brilliant for airports too. Uh, there's a bit of a story there of uh, my daughter Tegan going to China, uh, and there's some footage of her running around the airport with those too. So yeah, really, really, really good bag setups. So that's excellent. Okay, so we've got the board on the famous jet surf stand. Uh, these guys have this little barcode set up on it. Gives you an idea of the, the VIN number of the board, and also it's got some um, QR codes that go into some uh, you know, board maintenance and writing and that sort of stuff. So a little bit of helpful hints there. But uh, most of the customers I sell boards to, I send them off the uh, the Jet Surf, Jet Surf tutorial, uh, which gives them all the insights how to look after. And we do a good uh, rundown over the phone, um, or as we're going to do today, the customers coming in, we'll do a good rundown with the customer uh, while he's here in the showroom. So. That's cool, we'll get, uh, get this off. <clears throat> Keep that into the warranty later on. Of course, under all the clips. Put this one up here too. Bit of glue on there, I'll get rid of later. So there we go, that's what the board looks like brand spanking new. So uh, when they come, they obviously come <coughs> with some absorbent beads, keep the moisture out, because um, every one of these boards before it's um, sent from the factory are actually water tested. Um, 
So the engine has been run, partially run in, uh, all the systems have been checked. So um, they always go. That's the great thing for me as a, as a distributor. Um, every jet surf I get always runs properly and uh, it's always sorted. So uh, again, it comes down to the quality of these boards. And you can have a, a good look at what's going on in there. There's some beautiful engineering in there. You know, my background is, is, is machinery and uh, 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 machining background. And I see the quality in that. Everything's stainless steel, aerospace materials. Um, so just a bit of an idea what you're looking at. So uh, the MSR engine that they use, especially designed specifically for these boards, um, they have some tie-ins to, to, to go-kart stuff, but you know, it's pretty much purpose built for this job. So what you do have is a 100cc engine, producing about 13 to 15 horsepower, depending on the model. Um, this particular board has a 2.8 litre tank, and we do a pre-mix on those, as you see on the fuel cap, at 50 to 1, and I use my Mogul 800 um, good quality synthetic two-stroke oil. Um, the reason I use that particular type of oil is it's it's just better for the engine as far as coking up goes. So that's the Mogul 800 we use, two-stroke. It's, it's a full synthetic, 100% synthetic oil. Uh, it's the top of the line motocross style oil. So what I find is by using this at a 50 to 1 mix, uh, you don't have to change the spark plugs that often. It's easier to start, it runs smoother, uh, less smoke. Um, every customer that I sell one of these boards to, I give them one of these, as well as my tried and true Lanox as a lubricant. Um, these two come uh, a gift from me every board I sell. That way, the customer's got the right stuff to start with. You know, they've got the right oil, they're using the right spray to lubricate and protect their board. So that's part of the deal we do. <coughs> So then from there, what I'll do with this board is, is while we're working on it, I'll, uh, I'll start to get it on charge. So down here below the oil um, feed line for the dry shaft, here's your little plug for your charger. So you're looking for the red cable tie and it's your typical jet surf plug, has a little clip on it, fingernail behind it, pull it back, pops off. That's just a dummy in there that's, that sits in a board just to seal off that plug so then no moisture gets in. So make sure after you charge, you put that back on. I have had some customers uh, not put that back on and yeah, it causes issues. So we'll get that on charge. Okay, so we've got the charger set up here. So basically, as you can see, it's not plugged in, it's green, saying that it's not connected. We'll sit that there, we'll plug that in. It's pretty easy to work out. It's a curved end and a straight end. Boom, put that in. And as you'll see, now that it's in, uh, it's red. And after, you know, three quarters an hour, an hour, that will become green and it's charged, ready to go. So, we'll just sit that one down out of there, out of the way for now. Because what we're gonna do next is we're gonna set up the bindings to this customer. So, we have the bindings which come with the board. As you see here. So, there's your base pieces. Strap together, get rid of that little fella. So as you can see, they're designed so your toes sit on that groove and your instep of your foot sits on that lump. So obviously you've got to get them set up correctly. So this particular gentleman is natural, which means his left foot is forward. So, uh, which is opposite to myself, I'm actually goofy. So what we'll do is we're gonna have a little look. So that will sit there like that with the instep inwards, obviously, as your feet are. And then that one there, again, with the insert in, yeah, instep inwards. So that's how you would set them up, um, obviously, for a natural rider. And just check it out, yep, that's correct. Cool. So what we're gonna do now is the boards are covered with a, a clear coating. You can actually see the edges of the clear coating there. So it's, a, it's like a vinyl um, wrap type coating. So to put the screws in, you've actually got to cut the the vinyl away. So basically just a nice sharp knife and you get in there and you gently carve out the little bindings holes like that. Okay we'll give you a bit more of a close-up on how that's done so just basically we've got to take these out like that. I do it at a 45 degree angle that way there's no excess of the vinyl wrap hanging in the hole because if there is it makes it difficult to start the thread so just run that around like that 
Now, in most cases, I'll do this for the customer before he takes the board, but um, if you ever receive a board that hasn't been fitted, obviously this is the, the process to making that happen. Okay, so that's got all out. You'll notice there's two sets, obviously for Goofy and Natural. Um, some customers, if they're gonna swap the, the bindings uh, from Goofy to Natural um, for friends and family, we'll actually cut these open as well. And then inside your tool kit, there's actually some um, button head uh, Allen key screws, which you can fill these holes. Because you, if you cut the vinyl out and leave them open, they're gonna fill full of sand. And of course, when you gotta use them, it'll be corroded and full of junk. So either keep them covered or cut them out and put the, the little binder fittings uh, in there, which are in the tool bag. But this guy I know, he's um, just using himself. So we'll just do the one side, so that's cool. So we'll set this bag up on here. So we don't mark the board. So obviously we'll do this one first. So now, Bag of screws. Now you've got to work out now which way the bindings are, obviously. So the curved, curved part of the binder obviously goes to the heel, uh, and then obviously that's the front with the straps on the side. So to make it simpler to get on, I, I open the straps up and it's wide open, which is good. So what you've got, you've got this plastic reinforcing. Uh, I guess you'd say molding on either side. So I'll get some screws out here. And some of the older boards, and this is the same. Notice how there's two lengths? So on the binding, you'll see that the, the toe side strap has a heavier strap than the heel side. Uh, in fact, there's two on the, on the front. Uh, so the longer screw goes to the front. Um, don't get them mixed up because obviously they'll uh, they'll bottom out on the board, and if you over tighten it, they'll break the little fitting under the board, and, and that's a bit of a, a pain in the ass to repair. So, so this is the way it works. So that's the front one, long one. It's got blue Loctite on, which is great. So put the end of the binding like that. Then the bigger strap goes first. The thinner strap goes second. And I'll hold that one in place. And we'll get a smaller screw for the rear, like that. Put that one in there, and then we'll put this little strap there. Making sure it's hard up against because if you don't, it gets tangled up in there. So that side sorted. We'll do the same on this side. So we get a long one, and it appears that uh, the long ones have a lock tight on it, and the short ones don't. So that's easy to identify which ones are which. four left for the other side and there you go so that's it there now the next bit can be a little bit challenging so what we'll do we'll get the binding we'll put it in position uh, we'll get off course of the, uh, the top of the binding around the right way and we'll get our five mil allen key so, what we've got to do, now, these bindings are adjustable in a sense, forward and backward. Um, this guy's a middle sized sort of guy, he doesn't have any huge in the way of feet. So, um, I'm just gonna sit it in the middle position there. So, that should work fine. So, you can see, we've lined up the hole there. We get our little screw set up, and then get it started. thread because this all squashes you down once it's all tightened up and make sure you get it square because if you don't the little brass inserts in the board will get all messed up so that's it 
like that. Now, as you see too, line the holes up and we're looking for the second slot for this side. There's only one side, but the outer slot is where the holes are. Don't put it in the middle one. I'm not even sure what that's there for. It won't fit. That's where we're going to start. That's it. And now, making sure that binding is in the center before we tighten up too much. That's cool. Now, this other side is always a bit of a challenge. It's a very tight little fit. Now, don't do these up too damn tight. Um, I have seen guys really tighten them up. All they do is squash and destroy the, uh, the lower binding, so just firm, not too out of control. We're not uh, to holding anything serious together there. And uh, it's all sandwiched with the fitting in the, in the, uh, the board body anyway, so. Cool, that's set up there. Then from there, I just like to neaten the bindings up. There's a little uh, elastic strap there. Put that back into there. Like that. Just a little pull up. Again, the elastic strap for that. That's how it's done. So, there you go. So that's right, heels on the inside. Can't go wrong. All right, we'll sort this around. Okay, that's the last screw. I'll just tighten him up. Again, not too tight. So now the thing is too, when you put these straps in place, just make sure that the, the thicker webbing one is parallel um, to the bracket. And as you can see, the edge there is parallel to the side of the board, or side of the binding, I should say. Just make sure that's set like that. That's it. And then we'll set these in position. Like that. And that's good to go. Okay guys, one other thing we're going to do for this particular customer is fill, fit up a uh, what I call a uh, intake sock so basically what it is the uh, the jet surf throttle body as you can see is is wide open there uh, which is great in normal circumstances but the guys at surf ride as this guy is going to do we find this here uh, slid on at the end of the throttle body prevents a lot of splash and water entering the engine so say for example you know you've you've gone through a big wave you've been smashed bit of water in the board and you got to take off if there's a splash down the intake of the throttle body, it'll make the engine stall. So this goes on, it prevents a splash um, and designed to basically keep the board more bulletproof when you're surf riding so it doesn't, uh, it doesn't stop on you. So pretty simple. Um, I have these made locally. The little spring inside is actually your exhaust spring, which I, um, I stretch into position. They're made out of wet set of material, so they cope really well with the, with the water. I've had them on uh, our boards here for about two years now and they're, they're doing really well. So uh, I sell those uh, for about 29 bucks if anyone wants one, I got them in stock. So I'll just show you how they go on. So it's pretty simple, just a, a big long cable tie. And we, uh, we put a loop in it to start with, make life easier. We slide that down into the board, bit of a tight squeeze to get in, but it's, it's soft. We'll also make sure I've got the cable tie down in place as well. So pull that on and then I face the intake to the top and some people will say okay well the water's going to get in there and get it into the, the throttle body but I find tucked up under there under that edge of the board not a lot of water gets in there if the water's going to come up it's going to come up from the bottom and if you've got that much water in the board that it's going to go in there you're in trouble anyway so uh, we find they work very effectively so there's two little ribs in the throttle body just feel from there so I get the cable tie on the ribs Tighten it up, just like that. And then we'll uh, snip him off, and that's it. And as you can see there, that's gonna protect the intake 
and prevent water getting in. And I'll get a little torch here so you can get a bit of a look and see what it looks like in there. So it just tucks away, sits beautifully in between the engine mounts. I lean it a little bit forward, so if there's any splash in the rear, um, it protects it better. So yeah, that's a good little thing, and the customer wanted those, so I've just stuck that on for him. Good stuff. So, okay, last job to do is uh, put the, uh, the fin bracket on the back of the board. So we just remove the little board protector there out of the way. And of course, there's four screws sitting in the board already. Whip them out. Okay, those four are out. Then the bracket, obviously it'll only go on one way. It's pretty straightforward where it sits there. And uh, you just screw it back into place. All right, two more on tighten this side. And that's done. So that's cool. So now that that's your SVS uh, two style fin. So the way the center one works, there's a little slot just there, which you can see that little dowel pin goes in and the slot, slide it forward and then crank it into place. And then you just do up the little adjuster screw and that's locked in. In fact, we'll take this fin out of the way. And that's how you remove it again back out through the hole. Cool. And then the SVS side fins, all you do, you've got the clevis, you stick that right forward in the hole, and then boom, that's in place as well. So piece of cake. All right, well that's ready to go. Good stuff. Okay guys, this board's all ready, all pre-delivered, ready for the customer. He's going to use it locally here on the sunny coast in the surf. So um, perfect board for that. The race boards are brilliant in the surf. So really what we're going to do to button it up, we'll throw his tool bag on the front. They're a beautiful little setup the way they sit on the front of the board with the, uh, the little straps going under the handles there. And of course, your strap on the front. Make sure you stick it behind the, the pull cord there. And we'll stick the handle around the binding. On there like that, like that. And they travel beautifully. So that one's good to go. You can go out and enjoy the surf and have a great time. So um, we'll do more of this sort of stuff in the future as far as uh, new board preparation and new models um, in the future. So uh, keep posted. We'll see you next time.